Evangelical America is changing quickly. At the annual meeting of the Southern Baptist Convention, the largest evangelical denomination in the country reported that it had lost more than 200,000 members in one year alone. But a new class of evangelical leaders are pushing through these challenges. We spoke to Matt Chandler, who is considered a rising star among young pastors, about how evangelicalism is changing in today's political environment. Can we agree that President Trump isn't of the utmost moral character? Absolutely. Like, I, are people arguing other than that? So this is what I want to ask you. To me, evangelicals prioritize morality, being Christ-like, and yet they played a huge part in getting him elected. Yeah. How did that happen? What, what did they like about him? Uh, I think people are frightened. Um, I, th- I think they're frightened at the speed at which things are changing culturally. Yeah. Uh, and so I think they begin to grasp for, for something that might help. The, the Obama presidency, great man, some of his policies and some of the ways he rolled out his policies um, really, really scared evangelicals. Yeah. And without any kind of real help, from pastors and ministers to help their people understand, the, the news media just whipped us into a frenzy yeah. and, and made people feel desperate. Yeah. Chandler invited us back to his church, which is one of the fastest growing in the country. This is not what I expected the village church to look like. We are in a shopping center. It kinda looks more like a Costco or a Target sandwiched between Starbucks and Chick-fil-A, but there are more than 10,000 congregants that come to the village church. This is what churches in many American suburbs look like today. Bought with the blood of Jesus. What are the challenges today in keeping young people engaged here? My experience with the de-churched, that's what I would call them, those who grew up in church and have left, is that it's a sense of hypocrisy that they picked up on, uh, a kind of cowardice among the church to address things that are serious and significant pains of our day. So whether that be um, domestic violence, what the church has been just painfully quiet on, uh, or uh, even things like racial reconciliation, which man, you step into those spaces, you're gonna draw a lot of flack from the evangelical world. But I think especially around um, topics like homosexuality, and we're, we're quick to say it's a sin, and you may understand, which I'm not gonna disagree that, that I would I would think from the scriptures that that's um, not what ultimately God intends. But to pretend like that we're not talking about human beings with souls um, who sometimes are deeply conflicted, it's just a great error. And to be right the wrong way is to be wrong. How do you think Democrats and media have isolated evangelicals? And where could they do better to be more inclusive? I think some of the blind spots on the left is that the left, specifically city left, feels like the country is more progressive than it actually is. And the more it presses, the more it makes um, conservatives dig in their heels. Mm -hmm. And the bathroom bill had passed, and I'm telling you, people were terrified by that bathroom bill. More than anything else, the thought that their children were gonna be in a bathroom um, with the opposite sex, right? And, and I know all the arguments around that, um, but, but I'm using the language that, that I think would make sense to most conservatives. That, that, that made them go, whoever, whoever the opposition is to that, I'm voting for. And then they lost their soul in it, many of them did. How do you think the evangelical community will be different in 10 years versus 10 years ago? Golly. Well, first, just the whole concept of what evangelicalism is is difficult right now. Very confusing. It is such a junk drawer. For some people, evangelicalism now is like a political party, uh, divorced from its you know theological roots. Um, I, I think you're gonna see what we've already seen probably three or four times in Christian history. There are going to be those um, that try to reach the world by becoming like the world. And then there are gonna be those that try to, by the grace of God, hold fast to orthodox Christian faith um, in a way that's compassionate and kind, and they're gonna have to weather the backlash of all the wrong that's been done in the name of Jesus the last 50 years. 